but you know we're squarely in the buy zone from my perspective if you've got a two to five year time horizon. Well, I think big money is accumulating, smart money is accumulating, and the very nature of a bull market is to shake loose as many retail participants as possible. Well, it, it's to be expected with that big of a miss. I mean, I think it was 200 something thousand jobs when they were expecting over 700,000. So that's an indication that the Fed is less likely to taper anytime soon. I know Jackson Hole last week, uh, Jerome Powell was talking about tapering dependent on how the data, you know, uh, the economic data shows over the next few weeks. That's an indication that we're, we're going to see more easy money for longer. And of course, the metals like that. So it's no surprise to see the metals bouncing on that news. And from a technical perspective, too, we were oversold bouncing off of some key support levels. So no, no surprise there. If, if you look at a chart, um, you'll see that we just bounced right off of the 200 day moving average in gold. And last week, I put out a post that if we can clear 1837, I think it's 1837 on a weekly basis, you know, that would be a first uh, higher high. And that's technically significant. Well, we came within about, you know, 20, 30 cents of that this week. So we didn't quite make that higher high. So we're at a key test right here. Early next week is going to be pivotal. If we can get above this uh, immediate resistance, I think uh, the signs are in that, you know, we're, perhaps we've seen the worst. Some analysts were saying that we could see silver, you know, drop to as low as like $20. Sub $20 silver would be difficult. But do you see that as a possibility that we could uh, take a dip lower? I do. Yeah. And I, I like to deal in probabilities, not predictions. So it is you asked if it's a possibility. And the answer is, of course, yes, anything is possible. Um, but it's a real enough possibility that we should be aware of it and mentally prepared for it. Although at this point, I'm, I'm really not expecting it. Even if we do see a really another uh, another really sharp sell off, that twenty two dollar area in silver is very strong support. That may take the Fed actually tapering to uh, br bring silver back below twenty two. Um, you know, if they continue to talk about taper and the market believes they're going to do it, we could come back and revisit twenty two. That wouldn't surprise me at all. But actually breaking twenty two dollar silver yeah, at this point, it does seem like an uh, outside possibility. But you know, it's something we should we should be prepared for. You know, there's there's no guarantees. And if we did fall back towards nineteen or twenty. I think that would be the buying opportunity of a lifetime. There's some things we're seeing now that are reminiscent of the taper talk back in 2013, 14, and 15. And it wasn't actually, you know, the taper that when they actually tapered, you know, the metal started to bottom, but it was the, the fear of the taper that w weighed heavily on the metals. And so whether they do or not, it's wh whether the market believes they're going to do it is, you know, likely to drive the short term uh, price action here over the next few weeks. A big picture look at the weekly chart for gold here. This goes back well over two years to May of 2019. And what we see here is a very clear primary uptrend line right here in green. And every time we've come back and back tested this, we've rallied. Well, uh, three weeks ago now, we had that big sell off on Sunday night. Everyone remembers that. Well, what was interesting, we closed the week back above this primary uptrend line. That was a big win right there. And that's a very bullish candlestick right there. And that's likely signaled higher prices. And sure enough, we've rallied for four weeks in a row here. And if you guys can see this on the chart, you see 1837, that's the previous high. Well, it's no coincidence that we came within about 20, 30 cents of that this week. And what we wanna see from a technical perspective is a series of higher highs and higher lows. That's an uptrend, right? So we need to get above that 1837 to mark out that first higher high. And that's significant for a lot of reasons. But, you know, the institutional trading algorithms that really drive these markets, they, they, they're programmed to uh, take into account these inputs. So a higher high above the previous high would be pretty significant. So 1837, that's a key number to watch uh, next week in gold. If we can get back above that, I think there's we would have a higher level of confidence that the lows are in. So this is a triangle pattern right here. And these triangle patterns tend to break in the direction of the prevailing trend. And in this case, the trend is still up, even though it may not feel like it. The trend is up in gold from a longer term perspective. So we did break out last week and then we got confirmation this week. So the initial resistance here is 1920. That's pretty stiff resistance. That's the previous all time high from back in 2011. And um, it's been resistance recently as well. So 1920 is the initial target. And then we've got 1960. And then the big number that everyone's familiar with is $2,089. Um, if we can get above 1920, I think the the path of least resistance would be um, towards trending towards 2089 in the months in the uh, months and quarters ahead. There's one more thing to point out on gold, the significance of that 200 day moving average. It's uh, perhaps not zoomed in quite enough there, but you can see we came back and back tested the 200 day and bounced right off of that today. And that's probably the biggest input to those institutional trading algorithms is that 200 day moving average. And we wanna see price above a rising 200 day and then dips tend to get bought by those algorithms. And right now, the, the coast is looking uh, clear for being, uh, you know, we closed the week back above that 200 day. So that's uh, significant. 
On silver, we've got this very clear, slightly upsloping uh, channel that goes back to August of last year. And you can see how well price has respected this. I mean, it just comes down and ticks it, um, you know, right to the penny and then bounces. We've done that three times and we've tested resistance on the upside twice. So uh, I was telling our members that if we can get above this clear downtrend channel, the path of least resistance would be a retest of this 200 day moving average, which is right about 26 bucks. So I'm looking for price to continue the momentum up to about 26. And then that's the big test. Can we get back above that 200 day in silver? If we can, I think uh, the charts will start to look much more constructive. Well, I think big money is accumulating, smart money is accumulating, and the very nature of a bull market is to shake loose as many retail participants as possible. And you know, it's unfortunate, but the bankers usually come out on top because they buy dips and uh, retail gets shaken off, at, usually at the exact worst time. I uh, had the privilege of meeting J Jim Sinclair a few years ago, and one thing he said really stuck with me is that when this thing goes, the bankers are gonna be on the right side of it, and that's because they buy dips and retail tend to sell. So I would certainly not be selling here. I mean, we could see a little bit lower prices, that's possible, but you know, we're squarely in the buy zone from my perspective if you've got a two to five year time horizon.